This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, you're going to be shown how to solve complicated proportions. We're going to step it up from those really simple proportions and show you what those advanced problems could look like. So in our first section, we're going to go over what a proportion is, and then after that, two more sections, each with an example. Let's get started. So let's talk about what a proportion is. And um, let's use an example that may be kind of simple to understand. Uh, let's take, for instance, the fraction 3 sixths. 3 sixths, if I reduce this, if I divide the top by 3, I get 1. If I divide the bottom by 3, I get 2. These two fractions are identical. So therefore, I can put an equal sign between them. They actually do indicate the same value. 3 divided by 6 is 0.5, 1 divided by 2 is 0.5, they're equal in value. Now, what's interesting about this um, particular equation is that we can cross multiply and see an interesting pattern. If I take 6 times 1, I get 6. If I take 3 times 2, I get 6. Notice how those two products are equal. So we say the cross products are equal. Sometimes geometry teachers use these means and extreme terms, whatever. I have another video uh, that explains what means and extremes are, and I'll post a link to that within the comments section of this video. Now, this isn't just a coincidence, this cross products are equal um, situation. Like, I could take another fraction. Um, let's take uh, 4 sixteenths. Um, if I were to reduce this particular fraction, Let's see, I divide that by 4, I get 1. Divide this number by 4, I get 4. So if I were to take 4 divided by 16, I do get 0.25. If I take 1 divided by 4, which is a quarter, I'm going to get 0.25. These two fractions are equal, therefore I could put an equal sign between them. So what happens when two fractions are equal? Well, their cross products are going to be equal. 16 times 1 is 16. 4 times 4 is 16. So you can see the cross products are equal. See, I'm going to make use of this particular property that when two fractions are equal, we have a proportion, and the cross products of that proportion are going to be equal. Okay, so in the next two sections, let's use this property. All right, here's our first example. I've got a proportion. In other words, I've got two fractions that are equal to each other. My variable here is k, and we're going to solve for the k that makes this proportion true. Uh, okay, so how do we do it? Well, in the last section, you saw this property that when we had a, pro a proportion, we can cross multiply. The cross products have to be equal. So in other words, if I take negative 7 times the k plus 3, it's got to be equal to negative 3 times the k minus 8. All right, now it's just a matter of can we do the algebra correctly? So let's do the distributive property. Negative 7 times k, negative 7 times 3. <clears throat> let's do negative 3 times k, negative 3 times negative 8. So far, so good. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, what I want to do is get rid of one of these k's since I've got k's on both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 7k to both sides. Okay, so if I add 7k to negative 3k, I get 4k. All right, that's the only thing that has changed. I just added 7k to both sides. Okay, now I want to get rid of this uh, positive 24. So I'm going to subtract 24 from both sides. So negative 21 minus 24 is negative 45. Okay, now what's the last step? Well, to get k alone, I got to get rid of this 4. Since I'm multiplying 4 times k, well, the inverse would be to divide both sides by 4. So I'm going to get a negative 45 divided by 4. Okay, well, if I did the multiple, or in this case, the uh, division, I'm going to get negative 
Okay, get a negative 11.25. Yep, did that earlier, and that's what I got. And there you have it. So there's the solution to this proportion. Let's take a look at one more example. All right, so here we have another proportion. This time, uh, you can see the variable there is P. So we're going to solve for P in this problem. Well, again, this problem works the same as the other. We deal with the cross products, and the cross products have to be equal. So let's take negative 5 times p minus 3 and let's take negative 3 times p minus 1. They have to be equal if this is a, indeed a proportion. Okay, so what do we do? Well, algebra. We're going to do the distributive property. So negative 5 times p, negative 5 times negative 3. We're going to take negative 3 times p, negative 3 times 1. All right, well, let's deal with this one just like we did the last one. Let's add 5p to both sides to get rid of this negative 5p. So 5p plus negative 3p is 2p. Now to get rid of this negative, or sorry, this 3, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So if I subtract 3, I get 12. 15 minus 3 is 12. Okay, now we're going to divide both sides by 2. So if I divide by 2, I get 6. And there you have it. That is the answer to the problem. Um, no other work needs to be done. So um, I have an uh, interactive quiz that uh, goes along with this that actually could test to see if you're doing this uh, correctly or not. I'll put a link to that into the uh, comment section of the video. Otherwise, please like this video, go back to Math Guide, check out our other uh, interactive quizzes, our text-based lessons, and our uh, instructional videos. Oh yeah, and please uh, sign up for the channel, right? Subscribe, that would be great if you could do that. All right, so you have a good one and take care.